بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فما بعد I'm in Metingi Park and I'm going down this very narrow little forest trail and suddenly I remembered what the ranger said to me a few days ago when I was here he said there is a bear in this park um, so if you come upon it don't don't pet him uh, but otherwise he is harmless so as I'm walking down here I am uh, making dua that I should not come across him I have no interest, interest in petting or not petting the bear um, we spoke about the issue of priorities and I thought let me also do another reminder right here in this beautiful place uh, on the issue of priorities now priorities are important uh, it's a no-brainer I don't need to tell you why I'm sure you know why priorities are important because unless we have our priorities right we cannot take any decision any decision whatever it is uh, whether it is what food to eat uh, whether it is what clothes to wear uh, whether it is what line of education to pursue, uh, whether it is to go here or there or not go here or there, uh, whatever be the question, uh, the correct decision can only be made if the priority is clear. So for example, if I say, well, should I eat this thing or not? Uh, the priority question there is, what will this thing do? to you, health-wise. It's not just a matter of being tasty. Health-wise, what is this thing that you are thinking of eating or not eating? What is it likely to do to you? And if the answer is that, well, you know, it might damage my health temporarily or permanently, um, then I don't think I need to give the answer to that. Uh, if the answer is no, I think absolutely, you know, alhamdulillah, it's something which is tasty, which is uh, very nice, and uh, it will not do me any harm. Go ahead. So the same thing applies to everything else. Priorities define and determine decisions. Decisions taken with the wrong priorities always lead to disaster. And that's the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala set the priority for us. Allah did not even leave us. And this is from the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah did not leave us to decide on our own um, the priority of anything. Because we don't know. And Allah knows. Wallahu alamu. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah knows then you don't know. So when we don't know, we cannot uh, talk about something that we don't know. So therefore, um, Allah set the priority for us. And what's the priority that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said? فَمَنْ زُحْزِيَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَخَطْ فَاسِ The one who is freed from the hellfire and entered into Jannah, only this person is successful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reiterated that. So I um, was talking about um, priorities. Let me come back to that. If you see this uh, basket-like contraption right here in front of me, uh, let me increase the size of the okay. If you see that, now that is um, something in which people throw frisbees. And there is a whole track uh, in this place which uh, has these baskets and it has uh, boards there saying you know what, how, how they score and whatnot and people throw frisbees into that the reason I brought that into the conversation is because again issue of priorities and goals and targets uh, just like a game if you don't know which goal you must aim for not only will you not win the game, but you probably do yourself a bad turn because if you go backwards, then you lose instead of winning. As I am talking to you, you can probably see, I hope the light is good enough. It's a very um, cloudy day, but the leaves are, tr are starting to turn. So we are uh, entering fall or we have officially entered fall. Um, fall has nothing to do with falling and gravity. It has to do with the American term for autumn. So we are entering fall and um, 
leaves are going, are going to turn. Uh, inshallah, it's my plan next week to go to New Hampshire on a, what is called a fall drive, which is uh, to go and look at fall foliage. I'm um, looking forward to that. It's a, it's a very, very beautiful part of the world. Inshallah, I will send you some pictures and stuff from there. So to come back to priorities, or to remain on them, um, without the right priority, we cannot take the right decisions. And as I mentioned to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَمَنْ زُحْزِيَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَاز وَمَا الْحَيَاةُ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاءُ الْغُرُورِ Now see, the, see where this ayat ends. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that only the one who is freed from the hellfire and entered into, into Jannah has succeeded. And Allah says, the life of this world is nothing but an illusion of deception. Illusion of deception. Now, if you think about this and look at our life decisions and priorities, I've been having conversations with various well-meaning good friends. Um, some of them quite learned as well. Learned in the sense of, you know, they've, had, uh, they've read a lot of books and so forth. Um, whose constant refrain is that Muslims are held back from progress uh, please notice the words Muslims are held back from progress uh, because of the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's moratorium on uh, riba, on interest based dealings and then uh, we have many people who are trying to find all kinds of loopholes to get around it um, not knowing or not understanding or not accepting or not realizing or uh, whatever that loophole doesn't change the rule, doesn't change the law. If fatwa does not change the hukum, the hukum is the hukum, the fatwa is somebody's opinion about the hukum. Doesn't change the hukum. So therefore it's very important to keep the priority in mind. Now think about this, that if we in order to get whatever we think us think of as progress in this life um, end up destroying our akhir meaning that if I take a, a loan uh, if I deal in riba and I've convinced myself because of some definition and whatnot that it's okay um, Allah didn't say it's okay the Rasul alayhi salam sallallahu alayhi salam didn't say it's okay, but I've decided uh, based on whatever the read I have. And I take an interest-based loan to build a house. Now, first of all, my house is not going to be as big and magnificent as the red fort was, Lal Qila in Delhi, uh, which was the house of the Emperor Shah Jahan. It is not going to be as glorious and magnificent as Fatehpur Sikri was in its time in Agra, which was the house of the Emperor Akbar. It is not going to be as glorious and magnificent in its time as it was. The houses of the Nizams of Hyderabad, whether it is Jamala Palace, whether it is Faragma Palace, whether it is Purani Haveli Palace, whether it is King Koti, or whatever, right? is not a hope. I mean, we cannot even dream on that scale. Forget about building it, forget about getting a loan to build that. We can't even dream on that scale. And so whatever we build will be less than that. And I'm saying less than that, you know, tongue in cheek, because our house doesn't even have the uh, possibility of being, you know, a fraction, absolute fraction of that. Um, however, we would have incurred riba. We would have been de dealing in riba. Now, what happens? Every Muslim, by definition, is a wali of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this very clearly. Allah inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahsanun alladhina amanu wa kanu yattaqwa. Allah said, verily and truly, there is no sadness and no fear for the awliya of Allah, for the special slaves of Allah who Allah loves. Please do not translate awliya Allah as friends of Allah. Allah does not have friends. He is the one who, there is nothing that resembles him, nothing that's equal to him, who will 
أحد سمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفا أحد and so therefore the of Allah is the one who Allah loves may Allah make us among the awliya so Allah says there is no sadness no fear for them who are they? والذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون they are the ones who have iman and they have taqwa just two conditions iman and taqwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite mercy did not put a metric on the iman or taqwa Allah did not say iman of this level iman of this quality uh, iman of this depth iman as demonstrated by tawakkul of Hatim al Asam. Uh, iman as demonstrated by the Zuhud of Hassan Basri Rahimahullahi ta'ala Iman as demonstrated or Salah, Khushu in Salah as demonstrated by the Salah of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq No, Allah simply said Iman and Taqwa How much Iman, how much Taqwa? That's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to decide and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't put a metric on it Now this is the huge, huge, huge mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So now, effectively you and I, may Allah include us in this, are by default the awliya of Allah. Now what happens if I take an interest-based loan? When I take an interest-based loan, what I've done is I've taken my name, I've rubbed my name out of the list of the awliya of Allah and I have put my name into the list of the enemies of Allah. Now why do I say that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared war on his own behalf and on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu whose shafaat, whose intercession we rely on, inshallah, on the day of judgment for our own forgiveness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put, declared war on the one who deals in interest. Now think about this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say riba al jahliya, riba al fadl, riba al this, riba al that. Allah said riba. Rasulullah in his final khutbah in, uh, uh, during his hajj, he said riba. He did not again further redefine it. Now, there are people in their uh, ignorance and uh, uh, in their misguidance, they say he did not define a particular riba, therefore this kind of riba is good to go. But my question is, if something is not defined, then what's our default setting with that? We take the default setting that if something is not defined, then the general principle applies. So if, a, if, a, if for example, if riba has 10 different forms, and riba does not have 10 different forms, these are all forms which we have created for our convenience, and nothing wrong with that. Um, so if riba has 10 different forms, and if the lawmaker simply says riba, and does not specify out of those 10 f different forms, uh, form 1 and 3 are okay, uh, form 7 and 9 are not okay. He didn't say that. He just said riba. So when he says riba, what is the understanding? The understanding is that everything, all those 10 things are prohibited. My brothers and sisters, take it or leave it. I am a person without courage, zero courage, with respect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with respect to disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely no courage whatsoever. I have no courage to defy Allah. And I am bequeathing that lack of courage, that cowardice to face Allah to you. Cowardice from facing Allah to you. Be a coward in the best sense and say, I will not defy Allah. Progress is to be freed from the hellfire. Progress is not to have some measure of wealth and influence and luxury in this life and then pay for that forever and ever in the akhirah. Da'iman abadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save us from ourselves and from the wasabis of shaitan. Wa sallallahu ala nabi kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi